All right, color and emotion we're gonna talk about today. We're introducing color. So as I just asked you, all your favorite color, we all have an emotion. We all have some connection to color. We have something we feel strongly about. It's something we kind of are asked from our earliest days in school. Like what is your favorite color is something we're asked all the time growing up. And it's something we kind of always have an affinity to no matter what. And it might not be a color that you wanna wear or that you wanna maybe paint your house, but it's a color that you have an affinity to. And as I said, mine is orange. I love orange. I rarely wear orange. I have not much, I mean, I have little things in or of orange in my life, but I just love orange. When I see orange, it makes me happy. I enjoy the bright happiness of that color and it just always makes me happy. So combining color and emotion is a powerful storytelling tool. We've already talked about how designers are storytellers. And so color can play a big role in whenever we're telling a story. A color climate that is clean and bright feels different from one that is airy and pale or muted and dark. Um, designers explore color's cultural context, uh, narrative content and psychological effects in order to alter the meaning of an image, environment or product and change its impact on users. Red can represent love and sexuality or violence and bloodshed. It can also mean stop, do not enter, or rejected password. In addition to conveying such culturally specific meanings, color can trigger responses that seem hardwired to the human psyche. Um, Christmas, I just saw in our chat, yeah, Christmas, definitely we can think of red when we think of Christmas. We can think of uh, the Republican Party. We're, we're talking about um, politics this next week, we're voting. The Republican Party usually represents themselves in red. In China, India, and in Nepal, it's what a bride would wear. Red is bridal color. In China and Japan, love, luck, and happiness are all indicated with red. And when they're wishing you good luck, they put actually money in red envelopes in China to celebrate um, happy occasions and gift giving. Um, in Western fairy tales, love, sexual maturity are all indicated with red. National flags, bloodshed for independence is considered red. Worldwide, the brand Coca-Cola owns red. Let's go to its complement, green. What does green mean? The color green means life and plentitude pretty much anywhere on the earth where plants grow. In product marketing, the color green is a symbol of eco-sensitivity and care for the environment. What do we think of when we think of green? Clean, maybe? Recycle. <laughs> yeah, Recycling. It's, it's actually quite interesting because Huntington uses like green and I'm not sure if it was supposed to mean for money and such, but when I see Huntington, I just feel so relaxed. Like when I look at their logo, it's just like, oh, it's green. Although I hate green, but still. <laughs> well, our school colors are green, right? I know, it's so bad. Our brand is COD is green. So we're all about green at COD. Um, other brands, seventh generation. Um, there's also a term called greenwashing. Who can tell me what that means? What does greenwashing mean? That's when companies like try and act like they're more environmentally friendly than they are, right? Exactly, 100% correct. They're acting environmentally friendly. They're not really doing the work, but they think if they wash their products in green, they will think them to be healthy. Another a perfect example of that is BP. Who's familiar with the brand BP? British Petroleum. They changed their identity to a kaleidoscope of green after they were trying to rebrand themselves based because they had one of their oil tankers dump millions of gallons of oil in the ocean and destroyed and killed countless numbers of wildlife. And so to rebrand themselves and to get people to wanna continue to use their product, 
they rebranded and what we call greenwashed their identity. So when you see a British Petroleum gas station, it's bright greens and yellows in the kaleidoscope that you would never think that they would harm the environment because they have this very environmentally friendly looking logo. But in fact, they did great damage to the environment. So green is a, a color that is used for, for truly green companies and companies that want to seem green, even if they're not, they're greenwashing. Um, it has become the color of eco-sensitivity, but it's also what we think of as fresh. When we think about food, we might be using it for fresh and for cleaning the products that are environmentally friendly, or sometimes they're greenwashing, you just never know. I've never heard of that phrase. Greenwashing. Green? Ah, it's just like so it's, whitewashing. I think that's a really good phrase for it. Yes, yes. I was gonna say, yeah. when I think of green, I think of go. You know, when you're driving, the green light means go. Yeah, go, exactly. I think actually I have, I can't remember if that's on here or not in my list. Yeah, go, yeah, red is stop, green is go. You're right. So speaking of emotional um, palettes, in a study linking music, emotion, and color, researchers create a remarkably subtle color palette to, to share with participants. Rather than pink hues, straight picking, sorry, picking hues straight from the basic box of crayons, they assembled an array of swatches that vary in lightness and saturation. Participants were asked to evaluate the emotional tenor of the colors independently, as well as related to linking to, to um, passages of music. So participants tended to link happy music and upbeat emotions with lighter, brighter, warmer colors. And while well, they linked sadder music and lower emotions with duller, darker, cooler tones. Emotional color palettes um, are some ways we use in design to help communicate a message in that storytelling we're talking about. So down here, these are colorways. These are three patterns. They're all the same pattern, but they have three different, distinctly different colorways. Um, the textile designers often apply different colors to a single pattern design, allowing them to create multiple products from one set of printing plates. Such color ranges are called colorways. Changing the color of a pattern can change its mood. To create the design shown here, Alexander Girard uh, provided the manufacturer with watercolors of the patterns and hand-painted swatches. Patterns are often used as backgrounds or textures that recede on a wall, a garment, a package, or a digital surface. Patterns help modulate an overall mood and ambience. Print trials, punch number two, 1958, designed by Alexander Hayden Gerard, um, which is a famous American designer. Um, he, he did a lot of patterns with showing very just different colorways. And you can see how different each one of these feel. It's the exact same pattern, but how different each one feels depending on the colorway you're perceiving. Here's an illustration. And it, the illustration is um, for a um, article on gut health. So these are supposed to be your gut friendly little biology in your system. You know, we all have to have healthy bacteria. You know, you're all familiar with probiotics and the move to like drink kombucha. <laughs> so this is showing what a happy, healthy gut would look like. So this is an illustration that's showing happy gut health and happy go lucky um, bacteria in your gut. By changing the color, illustration is essentially the same, but changing the color, you can see how different the unhappy gut is looking. This is a gut that isn't happy, isn't having its probiotics, isn't drinking kombucha. And so just by looking at really the same graphic, just about little difference in the mouths and things, but you can see color and the desaturation of color really makes a difference in the mood and feeling of this illustration. That reminds me of the, um the things that Monet used to do where he would take like the same scenery and paint it in different times of day um, and different 